Director of Recreation and Community Services for the Short School District. And Nick Phelan is our new brand new our supervisor. Um, so we've been here like two years. So um, Nick's in charge of sports and youth programming, and that's why he's kind of tagging along um, to get a feel for um, all his summer programs that he's going to inherit um, very quickly. But what I'd like to do is talk about the Summer Bulletin and, and talk about what programs and offerings we have um, for youth all the way through through adults. But did everybody get their bulletin in the mail? Just I always like to take that survey. Because if you don't, it's, we, we kind of track because your postman delivers it. And we know that there's some places in Shorewood that for this type of bulk mailing, they don't necessarily um, get those. So it's always nice to find out those little hot spots in Shorewood. But um, our registration has started, and we are extremely excited about the bulletin this summer. Um, as many of you may know, um, Shorewood added a summer school enrichment program last year. It was tiny and kind of got lost in the bulletin. It was a last-minute thought. And summer school um, is beneficial for school districts because it can add additional revenue um, for the schools, and that's what we are hoping to do in Sherwood to bring in that additional revenue, which will help, as we all know, in our, in our budget cuts at times. Um, this summer, it's the second year for the summer enrichment program, and we doubled the amount um, of classes offered. So when you look into the bulletin, we've still organized it um, by weeks. So if you turn to any page where you see weeks, you're going to see a list of programs that are offered. And what you want to do is you're going to see the grade that you're, that's listed. And we, we believe in, in the rec department is, is that it's the grade that your child's going to go into in the fall because they're done with like seventh grade. They want to be eighth graders now and known for eighth grade. So when you look in those charts, you want to look to see your child's grade into the fall. And wherever you see a check mark in those boxes, that is the class that we're going to offer for that, that grade level. This year, what we've done is we've combined recreation and summer school classes all into the weekly chart so that when you're planning your activities for any age of your children, you know exactly what is occurring each week at each hour so that you can coordinate your calendar um, at home. Wherever you see a green line, that means it's a summer school class. And summer school, if, and we hope that you will enroll in those type of classes also, besides the recreation department programs, but summer school is real important. If you do sign up, you're going to notice that there's, it's a very nominal fee. Um, some classes, or the majority of the classes, are zero um, to a little bit of fee for um, some supply costs. In summer school, um, our Department of Public Instruction states that you cannot charge for summer school. You can only charge for your consumable supplies. So for instance, that's why you see a nominal fee um, associated. So we can't pay a salary that has to come out of what's called a fund 10 balance or supply cost. So for summer school though, if you sign up for summer school classes, it's real important that you send your children to summer school. And the only reason, even though it's a nominal fee or zero cost, is that the district is able to count those children in our third Friday count. So your attendance in summer <laughs> school, if you do enroll your children, it's real important because we have to take all that attendance from the summer and we have to enter it, actually the business office does, enter it into a formula and then that can bring back revenue and it's a three year rolling, rolling average. So it's a benefit for your children to enroll in summer school courses because in the future that's going to only assist in bringing revenue for the district um, for that. Now, we've also added, and, and Mr. Joints here, is we're pretty excited we had some high school um, teachers come forward and add some new high school classes. So if you have high school age, you're going into the ninth grade, please take a look because we have intro to business, ethics, leadership classes, we have Shakespeare, we have a drama program, we have tune up the, for AP calculus if you have an older student that's gonna go into, into that in the fall. So we're real excited about that as well. Um, teen volunteers, we're always looking, and this is a wonderful opportunity for your children to become volunteers prior to getting you know, their first job. This is a good 
um, opportunity to get that responsibility, dependability, get exposure to kids if they're interested in that as well. Um, we've extended the deadline, um, so Wednesday. So if you if you have a, a student at home, a child at home that's interested, please take um, a form and turn it in um, for that. Also on your table is um, Mr. Dan Zuns and um, the boys basketball coach John Hotch have combined to do a really neat program offering for um, the kids for basketball season. We've run a basketball league where it's, it's a sandlock type play where the kids just come and play basketball twice a week. And then the coach has always done a sports camp. What we're offering this summer is if your child signs up for both the basketball league as well as the basketball camp, you get 50% off your basketball camp. Um, enrollment. So that's another option for you for reduced fees. And, and, and what he's hoping to do is encourage those kids to, to play basketball all, all year, all summer long for that as well. Other program offerings, if you have any high school students, they're always welcome to sign up as adult programs. Um, so your high school kids are considered adults for that. You're going to find that we have programs starting um, basically 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. Um, Monday through Friday, going basically till about 5.30 and sometimes even later, depending on what that class offering is. Um, weekends we don't have much because we found out that Shore residents tend to vacate Shorewood and um, don't s spend a lot of time recreating in Shorewood over, over the summer months um, for that. But Kelly is doing, um, and I'll plug the people that are here that are, are teaching, Kelly is doing a wonderful class. For the first time, she offered um, a science of food class for that middle school age and high school years, a science of food class. And um, it was a fabulous opportunity last year where the kids learn about food. Um, they take field trips, but then they also apply it to science. Um, what What's involved in dairy and how ice cream is made. And she really kind of... I don't know if you want to say anything. I, I can't do your program justice. So the first day we cooked and learned about how it worked, and then the second day we took a field trip to see how the pros do it. Yeah. So we went to the grocery store, they're set up, and the difference between ice cream and cost very scientific taste test. Um, but it's really fun. And then we had a field trip to the It's a fabulous, I mean, they, we, at the end, we even had parents of the kids coming because the kids would come home and say, what a fabulous class this was, and the parents ended up coming just to be chaperones, just to observe what a wonderful opportunity it was. So please consider that as well. Um, Bill Howery's doing a, a running class as well. That's always popular each summer, um, the, the youth running opportunities, as well as um, Dom Newman's preseason for cross country. That's a real popular, both of those classes are real popular. So if your children are into running opportunities, um, that's bright and early in the morning um, for that. We'll have the um, fitness center opened here um, at the middle school um, during the day um, for the children that um, want to participate in strength training, cardio, free weights, as well as that. Um, so Joan is uh, offering um, for um, elementary kids origami and math. The idea of, of making origami and how that relates to math skills um, as an opportunity too for that. And I think I caught everybody here. But any questions on summer, please consider looking through this. If you have questions on how you structure things or how um, it looks, what we've tried to do too, um, if you've been involved in our program, if you have the younger kids, we have the kids club in the afternoon. It's an um, afternoon playground. And we do child care basically from 7 a.m. to 5.30, it's called Home Base in the Morning and the Kids Club. This summer we, we um, were concerned too with economic times and, and things like that. So in the book you're going to notice that for Kids Club you don't have to sign up, or Home Base you don't have to sign up for Monday through Friday like you have done in the past with your kids. Um, you can pick and choose your days. Um, now what we found is it's a, a little bit of a scheduling nightmare. It takes more time for us to, to enter the database. And then staffing as well, you know, instead of knowing that we're going to hire eight high school kids, for instance, um, Monday through Friday, because it's going to be consistently 50 kids, um, now we may have 50 kids on Monday, Tuesday's going to be 70, 
you know, Thursday's going to be 20. So we're, we're going to pick and choose and let parents decide what they want to do. So we're kind of excited about that opportunity because we're giving parents that opportunity and children that opportunity to decide what they want to do instead of a whole full week of, of Kids Club. They can pick and choose if they only want to come swimming on Tuesday with us. So we're excited about that as well. So questions for you that I can answer about summer school enrichment recreation programs lots to offer we've really expanded the programming lots of sports camps arts programs cake decorating it's back this year for those that have had children go through it before um, those are really fast if you have children involved in that before as soon as we get the North gym back um, for those that uh, have been involved in our gymnastics program, we haven't had it for a whole year because we haven't had the facility because the physical education building at the high school um, has been being remodeled. So it'll be back in the fall. In the fall. In the fall. The physical education building will reopen in um, August. Also, just a heads up, um, at the high school this summer, it's going to be a, a little bit hectic with all the construction occurring. The physical education building is still under construction. Um, we're gonna find out um, for sure, unless my peers know, about the high school parking lot may be under construction this summer. Um, it will be. Oh uh, yeah, that's true, the, the, the wall. Um, the administration building where I'm located, the rec department's located, Mr. Joint's office um, is located, that is going to be remodeled this summer. So the big joke is you may find the recreation department in the parking lot um, without a 24 hour notice. So we're gonna have to be kind of flexible because we're gonna get a new library at the high school that's gonna be remodeled and things like that. So we're excited about those possibilities for the administration building. It needs some TLC, um, the high school does. So good question, thank you. Good, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Handouts. I love handouts. I'm very visual. 
So, um, the cartoon is from, it's from Six, and if you read the, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, and it's, it's, um, it's about uh, the boy who is, um, he's in trouble for something. He gets in trouble with the car, and I'll let you read the cartoon, because then we're going to move on to how to set consequences and how to start the discussion with your child about consequences and rules for the summer. I just thought it was very um, apropos to kids. Kids don't always know what the consequences are. They don't always know what is expected of them and therefore you need to have that conversation. Uh, the yellow sheet is a, a good starting point. It's a good icebreaker for having that conversation because I know um, you, many parents think, okay, my kid is 13, I can leave them at home for a while. Well, sometimes they don't always know what they can do at home. They don't know what they can do with the freedom that they have. And this can be a good starting discussion. What, what can I use when no adult is at home? because some of those things can be dangerous. And actually, a parent gave me that. And I thought that that was a really good thing to pass on to, to you guys. So um, it's a good, good beginning point for discussion about what they can do and what they can't do. I recommend when you sit down with your, with your child and you go through the rules that um, you talk about the consequences and what they think is fair and what they think are fair rules. So they can have some buy-in into this. And they can know and understand what is expected of them. Um, and I know that Kelly wants to get started, and I don't want to, OK, you're OK? No, I'm just taping you. OK, OK, OK. I think um, a really important point is to sit down, go over the rules, talk to parents, talk about what your expectations are, and um, work out the rules together. And in that way, they have full understanding, and you won't get into the problem with, with this kid. But I didn't think it was going to be punitive. So they know what, what to expect and what you need to do. And I, I know that sometimes it's hard calling parents that you don't know. But when your child said he, says he's going to Johnny's house, it's important to ask some crucial questions and they can be difficult. Sometimes you may need to ask, are you going to be home? And you, you want your child to be supervised, especially if there's a large group of people, of kids coming to your house. It's important that you know that the parent is going to be home. And you can ask questions like, what time would you like me to pick up my child? What time would you um, like me to drop my child off? Who's going to be there? Um, ask how they feel about Alpha. There are parents who want their kids to go to a house, and parents, some say it's okay if there's alcohol there. If it's not okay with you, you need to tell that parent that's not okay. I remember when my daughter was a freshman, she, uh, it was homecoming, and I made a very difficult call. I had no idea who this parent was that my child was going to after homecoming. And I introduced myself, and I said, are you going to be home? The parents said, yes, I'm going to be home. How many children are you expecting? Oh, we're not going to let any more than 20. And sure enough, a whole group of kids came, like 50 kids. And I told my daughter that if you know, you're uncomfortable there, you call me. Just say you're sick. Make something up. And I said, but I did talk to the parent, and I did not ask a question. I did not say, well, how do you feel if someone brings alcohol? I didn't ask that question. I was naive. I thought, okay, the parents are going to be home. I'm safe. Uh-uh. There was alcohol at that house, and that parent was home supervising the kids. So my daughter calls at 11 o'clock. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, what's the matter? What happened? And she said, um, I'm not feeling well. So she knew that I wouldn't ask any questions because we had that policy. If you call and you say you're sick, I will come and get you, and I won't ask any questions. She called, thank goodness, and she, she did tell me that people had brought in 
alcohol in water bottles. So, you know, it's, it's scary business being a parent. And you have to ask the questions, and if you do have a group of kids over in there in the basement, make yourself known. Bring down soda, bring down potato chips, bring down anything so you know what's going on down there. Potato chips in small bowls, so it has to be refilled <laughs> often. <laughs> But you might need more. <laughs> no, I'll yeah. take the bag back up. <laughs> you want to be a nuisance to them so they know that you're around. And it's not always easy to do. And they are going to fight you on it. But that's what adolescents do. They fight you on things like that. But, you know, it's, it's okay. It's okay if they have tantrums and run to their room and slam the door. It's okay. You're not their friend. As in my newsletter, um, I have a copy of that too. My last newsletter. Um, and in bold, I, I have assert your authority. You are the parent. You are the parent. You're not their friend. And I think it's important to remember that, that you have a lot of influence. Your children look up to you, they admire you, they want to do what they. Most of the time, they want to do what, what, they don't want to make you unhappy. And a lot of times they will fight you, but they need boundaries, and they want the boundaries. And a lot of times they sense when something is not going to go well, if they're going to go to a party and it's not going to go well, they can sense that. So be the bad guy. Say, no, you're not going to let them go. You're not, you can be the bad guy. You are the parent. It's okay to be the bad guy. It's okay if they go up to their room and slam the door. And another thing is, is that um, um, I know in this day of cell phones, it's really hard to keep track of your child because they're using the cell phone. They could say that they're going to Jamie's house, but they're really going to Robbie's house, and you didn't really want them to be at Robbie's house. So one um, thing I recommend is that they call you from the house that they're at so you can see the caller ID so you know that they are at that house. Otherwise, you really don't know where they are. And I know that in Shorewood, um, kids travel from house to house to house. And you, if you want, I would make it a rule that they need to call you from each person's house, from that hard line, so you know that they're there. So you can call, and you can make that phone call, and you can see that they are at that house, or they should call you and let you know on the caller ID rather than the cell phone, because you don't really know where they are when they use that cell phone. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard parenting kids these days. Very hard. Yes. You read a publication for me this morning, and I don't know who I'm doing a commercial for at this point. But yeah. that, uh, they have all cell phones with GPS in them. And there's a service that you can use where you can track the cell phone of phone numbers uh, that you have certain. So you know where your child is. So you know where your child is. You know where your child is. Yeah, you respond to the, I mean, you're paying for the phone initially, so you can hook it up on this. Allegedly, you can track people with the GPS that you put their phone numbers in for. And then he also said, and again, I don't know who I'm doing commercial for, that there's a function on there that you can automatically just start speaking through the speakerphone on that phone you're tracking. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs>
that only tells you where the phone is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. Right. And the school psychologist at both the intermediate and high school, Arthur Anderson, says always trust but verify. So uh -huh. there's your green light on going ahead and paying five dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, so if I can leave you with one thing, network, network with parents, network and just talk to the parents of your children's friends and make sure that the rules, that they, that parents understand what your rules are and your children understand, most importantly, the children understand what your rules are and you can make up the rules together as you go along and if you explain the rules to them, they're, they're likely to understand why you have these rules. I always told my children that um, a curfew, a curfew is a curfew. 11 o'clock is 11 o'clock. If you're going to be any later, you need to call me because I worry an awful lot. So, you know, if they understood, oh, mom really is a worry ward, I better call her. Um, and they understood that I worry a lot, give me a call. Another thing is um, be awake when they so you can see how they're acting, see what they look like, see, you know, just make sure they're okay when they walk in that door. And, you know, ask them what kind of night they had and who they were with, and um, be awake when they walk in. That's, that's important. Very important. Any questions? Discussion points? Okay. Those tricky kids, yes. <laughs>